Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie. Today I've got episode two of Can I Hack It? The DIY series on my channel, where I challenge myself to Ikea hack decor from popular home decor stores. And today is all about anthropology. So if you missed the first episode where I Ikea hacked Urban Outfitters decor, I will link it for you guys in the description box down below if you wanna check it out. But I've picked out four decor pieces from Anthropology that I'm going to try to recreate using items from Ikea. So as always, before we get started, I'm going to do a quick little Ikea haul to show you everything that I'm working with today, and then we'll jump right into the DIYs. The first items that I picked up are lampshades. This is a 13 inch lampshade that was $9.99. And then I have a 17 inch lampshade. It's the same one, just different sizes. And this one was $16.99. This doormat, which is really big, so I can't show you the whole thing, but this was only $7.99. And lastly, I'll be working with the Lots Mirror, which comes in a pack of four for $9.99. Okay, so those are all of the items I'll be working with today from Ikea to recreate my anthropology decor. So let's go ahead and get started. The first item that caught my eye on Anthropology's website was this gorgeous mirror for $398. I love the modern look and design of it, and the details on this one are actually wood, but I had an idea of something else that I could use to try to achieve a similar look. So I bought a few of these half round foam dowels. They're flat on one side and rounded on the other, and since they're foam, they're very flexible. I wanted each piece to be an inch and a half long, so I measured them out and made a pencil mark every inch and a half. These are really easy to cut with regular scissors, so I made the cuts and ended up with a total of 56 pieces, 14 for each side of the mirror. I started with corner sections of the mirror by gluing two pieces to form a 90 degree angle. I repeated this in each corner. Next, I started gluing my pieces on one by one in a row down the sides of the mirror. And you should be able to fit 14 pieces perfectly if you're using the Ikea Lots mirror like I am. And I would recommend lining them up ahead of time to get an idea of how they should be spaced because if you make them too close, you'll have a small gap at the end. And this did happen to me one time, but rather than redoing the whole thing, I just cut a more narrow piece of foam to close the gap. I added painter's tape to separate the foam from the rest of the mirror and made sure to push the tape as close as I could to the foam pieces. For the color, I went with a light peachy pink color to try to get as close as I could to the original and I'm just using simple acrylic craft paint for this. Remember to paint the tops and bottoms of the foam rounds as well because they will be visible when you display the mirror. For the corner sections, instead of adding any material to them, I just painted right onto the mirror with the same color. I'm really glad I did this because it gives enough of a distinction without being too in your face. It did take me a couple of coats to get the mirror fully covered. I remembered a little too late that the corner pieces needed to be gold, so I went back in later and painted them with a gold paint pen, but my tip here is to actually paint the corner pieces gold before you glue them on. It's just easier this way to avoid getting gold on the other pieces after the fact. I eventually got it done, but it was much more tedious doing it the way that I did. As a last step, I went around the entire mirror and painted the edge of it the same peachy pink color as the rest. This helped everything to blend together and look more seamless. I'm so in love with this mirror. It's such a glam modern piece that would look amazing on a vanity, in a bathroom, or on a dresser, and you can also make any size mirror that you'd like. But either way, it's a beautiful accent piece and I'm so excited about it. The next item that I found from Anthropology is the Fern Fronds doormat for $98. And I've been wanting to replace our doormat for a while, so this seemed like a good choice since I really like the simplicity of it. This doormat is bigger than I expected, so I created a stencil using my Cricut machine, but I did want to add that if you don't have a Cricut, you can also purchase leaf stencils. I actually have a pack of these from the craft store. I think I picked them up at Michael's, but for this I wanted to create a custom design. So once I had it cut out, I weeded the extra vinyl, and now I've got my sticky stencils. Another note is that you can also create a stencil using cardstock and use clear adhesive as well. I transferred my stencil to my doormat and then used the original image as a guide to stick on the little pieces that separate the leaves. Mm -hmm. 
For the second stencil, I tried using transfer tape, which was a little tedious because the fibers of the doormat make it a little hard to stick the vinyl to it. You can tell I was struggling a little bit to get everything to stay where I wanted it to. Basically, this was all just trial and error and a little bit of a tedious process, but I eventually got everything in place. To paint this, I'm using acrylic craft paint, and I don't mind using this because we have a covered porch, so the doormat won't be getting exposed to the weather. But if you want something more sturdy, you can also use spray Flex Seal. I've heard of people having really good results with that. So you just need to cover up the rest of the mat so you don't get the spray anywhere else if you do decide to use this. I used a sponge brush to dab the paint into the fibers of the mat, and it took me a few coats to really get in there and get the color dark enough. I did a few touch-ups here and there to make sure that everything was fully covered, and I realized that I wanted to add one more fern design to connect the two sides a bit more, so I added another smaller fern and painted that as well. Then I carefully peeled the stencils away and my design had transferred perfectly. This was a really easy project and I love that you don't need any expert skills to achieve this look. The last thing that I really wanted to try is the Anthropology Bungalow Chandelier, which is $268. I really like hanging statement lights like this and it has such a fun beachy boho vibe to it. So I started with the smaller of the two lampshades that I picked up, and this will of course be the bottom part of the chandelier. I also grabbed a few rolls of jute twine. To get started, I glued the end of the twine to the inside of the lampshade to keep it in place. Then I slowly wrap the twine around the lampshade, bringing the roll down through the top. This is the entire process of creating this light. It doesn't get any more complex than this. So it's just a matter of being patient and taking the time to line the twine up and wrap it over and over. For reference, it took me about an hour to finish this smaller shade and about an hour and a half for the bigger one. And I did this project over a few days. Whenever I had half an hour free, I would just put on Netflix and do some more wrapping. And honestly, it was actually kind of relaxing and went pretty quickly once I got into a rhythm. As you're doing this, just check every once in a while to make sure that the twine is straight up and down and that you're not slanting it to one side. I also stopped and glued the twine down on the inside of the shade every five inches or so. Once I had both shades fully wrapped, I placed the larger shade over top of the smaller one. Then I tied a piece of twine to each of the top metal bars on the larger shade. I measured four inches down on each of these pieces and made a mark with a Sharpie. Then I tied the twine to the bottom metal bars of the smaller shade, being careful to tie the knot at the mark that I had made on it. Now the two shades are connected and I can add my bulb and hang it up. Okay, you guys know what to do. Let me know in the comments down below which one of those was your favorite. I always love to see if there was like a clear winner or if you guys are split on which one the favorite is. So let me know in the comments. And as always, if you try any of these out, make sure you tag me on Instagram or to share your pictures with me like in a message or something. I love to see them and share them on my stories when I can. And if you don't wanna miss any of my videos, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. I've got another episode of Can I Hack It already planned and coming up soon. So it'll be a surprise as to what store it is, but I think you guys will really enjoy it. So make sure you are subscribed, hit that little notification button so you don't miss my videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys really soon.